Okay, today I want to make a video for you how I use moving averages in my charts. So um, you can read it in my ebook that I'm using almost um, three different exponential moving averages in my charts. Why exponential moving averages and not simple moving averages? Exponential moving averages uh, react much faster to um, price movements and yeah, produce a smoother moving average um, um, mo moving average in the charts, as you can see here in the example of Cooper. So the price is very, uh, very smooth and very close um, to the original um, to the original stock price. So I personally use three moving averages in the daily chart. The first one is the EMA 65. This is my main moving average. average. And why I'm using the EMA 65 and not the EMA 50. A lot of traders use the EMA 50 and that's absolutely okay. I personally think that the EMA 65 gives me a little bit more room. So if you look at the EMA 50 in the charts, you often um, see that it is undercutted by the price and then the price reverse. And the EMA 65 um, gives a little bit more room so that the low of the bars or the low of the candles are yeah much closer to the moving averages and uh, you don't have so much um, under cuts um, below the um, moving average so this is one reason and of course i back tested it for my own strategy but i must admit the difference between a moving average 50 and a moving average 65 is not so big so i'm not a hundred percent automated or system trader so i always have some dis discretionary elements in my trading and one of them is of course to um, look at the charts and to look on the moving averages and the price so i always i always interpret um, how the moving average is behaving and i can filter yeah the undercutting of moving averages um, out um, if i look at the chart um, yeah, but I'm using the, the MA65 because I'm thinking it's much more smoother, it gives more room and um, yeah, you can see that a lot of um, a lot of corrections and consolidations and on a moving average 65. I'm using it mostly as a trailing stop, so I have uh, some rules to take profits if the price closed below the EMA 65. And you can see here an example, this is Cooper, and you can see it uh, here wonderful that, that uh, every low of the candles is very close to the EMA 65. And um, yeah, it's, it's really good to use as a trailing stop. And this is not only um, yeah in, in 2019, it's also if you go back here, for example, in 2018, you see the same behavior and um, yeah, you see it in many stocks. Um, another moving average I use, um, but uh, I hide it from my, uh, from my chart and only activate it if I have to, is the EMA21. This is very similar to the um, EMA20 or um, also the simple moving average 20. And there's no big difference and uh, this is you cannot get an, an, an additional edge if you use the SMA or EMA so it's it's really more um, yeah it's really more a question if you can work better with the EMA or an SMA for example so if I uh, look at Shopify as a stock you can see that the that Shopify um, reacts better to the EMA 21 
Uh, you can see that here in this run-up in 2019, for example, that every pullback um, got rejected at the EMA21. And if you can, or if you see that the price stayed above one moving average for at least seven or ten weeks, then this moving average is becoming the dominant moving average. So in that case here with uh, Shopify, you um, should use the EMA21 instead the EMA65 as a trailing stop because every pullback ends or got support at the EMA21. Um, so that's a case where I switch from the EMA65 to the EMA21. And the same is true with the EMA8. If I look, for example, at Tesla here, um, you can see that Tesla made a parabolic move here, so a very fast move. And in that case, if you, uh, if you, um, if you enable the, the EMA8 here, in that case, you can see that every pullback end at the EMA8. And this is a sign that the EMA8, EMA8 is the um, dominant moving average. And in that case, um, I prefer the EMA8 as a trailing stop and not the EMA65. I personally always um, I, I personally always uh, want to see at least seven to ten weeks um, that the price is above one moving average, um, and then I'm I'm switching between the moving averages. But I see if um, yeah if uh, multiple pullbacks um, uh, multiple pullbacks uh, got rejected by one special EMA. I start to follow it and uh, yeah, see if this is really the dominant moving average. Okay, um, in my weekly chart, so I'm switching now to the weekly chart, I'm, I'm using um, two different moving averages. So uh, the first one is the EMA13. Why EMA13? Um, very simple. One week has five days. And uh, you know that I'm using the EMA65 in the daily chart. And if you now multiply 5 with 13, you get 65. So um, the EMA13 in the weekly chart is the same as the um, EMA65 in the uh, weekly chart. Um, the blue line here, I must uh, correct this uh, value here, 40. Um, the blue line is the EMA40. I'm using the EMA40 in the weekly chart and here's the same logic. If I multiply five days, so five with 40, um, I get 200. And um, the EMA40 in the weekly chart is like the EMA200 in the daily chart. So if I open, for example, stock like Ring Central here, you can see that the EMA30 a 13 is a very good pullback level and um, yeah it's it's like the EMA 65 on the daily chart and I use it also as a trailing stop and I also use it to see if the price finds support at the EMA 13 and this always give me um, clues um, how strong the stock is so if the EMA, if the price get uh, yeah get support at the EMA 13 here. And this is always a clue that um, that the stock itself um, yeah, is supported by institutions and by big players who accumulate uh, their positions uh, around the EMA uh, 13. And I, I personally use it also to um, look for pullbacks. So if you, for example, see here, you can see a breakout um, from a base pattern and then um, the stock finds support at the EMA 13 and this is always um, yeah a possibility to look for a first entry or to add to your position um, because it's it's a very young trend and 
Um, the opposite is if, if I look, for example, here in the end of 2018, now you can see that the stock itself got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, yeah, ten times support at the EMA 30. This is a very, very extended uh, trend and a very old trend in that case. I would never, yeah, I would never buy a new position after three to four pullbacks uh, to the EMA 30. And the same is true here for the EMA 40. Uh, you can see here in that cluster, you can see that the uh, stock uh, got support at the um, EMA 40. And this is always uh, something where you can say, okay, now a larger correction ended and uh, now the stock is ripe for a new uptrend. Of course, this is never a, bull, um, a buy signal, um, but it gives you clues how far the stock corrected. So if the stock find uh, support at the EMA 40, it's always a sign that it's ripe yeah, for a new uptrend. Um, yeah, if, if I, for example, open the uh, Cooper chart again, um, you, uh, you saw in, in my daily chart um, some minutes ago, you can see the same pattern here, Cooper find or found support here at the EMA 40 and then another rally started. Or if you look, for example, for larger trends, um, in the last year and phase energy, for example, you can see the same pattern here. It found support at the EMA 40 uh, one time and the second time here in November 2019 and then started a new rally and then found support also around the EMA uh, 13. So, of course, you can, uh, you can also use EMA 10. I think there is no big difference between EMA 10 and EMA 13 but I want to be consistent here and um, because I'm using the EMA 65 on the daily chart I'm using here the EMA 13 in the um, weekly chart. Okay I hope that the video um, helps you to understand um, my moving averages in the charts and um, yeah I'm showing a lot of uh, charts in my free newsletter which I write one time per week and there you can see the same moving averages especially in the daily chart.